Hi, my name is Martin W. Ball, and I have been an Enagic distributor now since February 2015. So that's approximately seven years at the time of recording this video. Now, since that time, I have witnessed changes in the way that we as distributors market thanks to the rise of social media platforms and the online technology and how industry regulators such as the Direct Selling Association, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, and even the Federal Trade Commission governs online home-based businesses, especially around direct sales, network marketing, affiliate marketing, and so on to protect both the public and companies' distributors. So what is my intention for this video? Well, thanks to my experience as an Enagic distributor and my close working relationship with the Head of Compliance for Enagic Australia, my intention for this video is to help you as a new or seasoned distributor ensure your business is compliant and protected from breaching Enagic's policies and procedures, as well as to avoid industry regulators contacting you due to unconscious, unethical behavior, whilst also to protect Enagic as a global company. I intend to give you a clear understanding about the benefits of compliance and how you can build a compliant business that rewards you tenfold for your commitment to behave in accordance with the policies and procedures. I understand that compliance isn't a fun topic and it's often believed to be holding us back. Although I believe it's here to protect us and it's in our best interest to keep an open mind to help us all achieve our desired success. And just as a note, this is a global compliance training. And just before we dive into the contents, as I have a level of understanding of the psychology of people and how some people choose to think and act negatively, I stress to you right now that I don't in any way believe that I am the owner of Enagic. I don't believe I am better than you or anyone else. However, I do know that I am here to help my own business, my Enagic team. Enagic is a company and quite possibly you, if you're open to what I share with you, so I thank you for your time and open-mindedness as I support you and others further. So let's look at the contents that I believe are most important to cover in the time that we have together to help you. Now we have already covered the intention. Next up is protecting your business, then why we have compliance, then a world of polarity, then the DSA's role and why we are a member of the DSA, then the governing bodies, then global distributorship, then the policies and procedures, then discounting, then selling Kangen water, then marketing, then health claims, then income claims, then online platforms, then proving your claims, then disciplinary action, then distributor termination, and finally, working with Enagic. Throughout this video, I'll be sharing questions that are put forward to the compliance team at Enagic and the answers given to those questions directly from the head of compliance. This is so that you can believe what you are receiving in this video is the truth and not what myself or any other distributor has possibly made up. Let's now talk about protecting your Enagic business. Now I am confident that every distributor who chooses to align with Enagic wants to ensure their business is protected from being destroyed. If you're a distributor, you will have agreed to the Enagic policies and procedures by signing them. This means that you are an independent distributor meaning you are not employed by Enagic, you are independent to Enagic. However, you have agreed to abide by their policies and procedures and in doing so, Enagic will financially reward your commitment to build your own Enagic business by acting in accordance with the agreed policies and procedures. Only you are in control of protecting yourself and your business. As long as you follow the policies and procedures, which may be viewed as rules, your business will be built on a solid foundation. Let's now look into why we have compliance. And I am confident we are all consciously aware that compliance is important to have to create awareness as to what is ethically right for both the public and you as a distributor. When I asked the head of compliance, why is compliance important within Enagic? Her answer was, compliance is very important to Enagic. The policies and procedures are the framework we give our distributors so they know what they can do and cannot do. It is important that these policies are followed to protect the individual distributors. Enagic needs our distributors to be compliant to protect other distributors as well as Enagic as a company. I also asked, why is it important for distributors to work alongside with the compliance departments? Her answer, we appreciate it when distributors work with us. When distributors are compliant and work alongside the compliance department, it makes everything that much easier. 
For example, if a distributor inadvertently does something wrong, it can be a simple conversation to educate them of where they have gone wrong. Whereas if this is not the case, the distributor's dealings with the compliance department may need to be more difficult. So when we choose to work with the compliance team, we are collaborating to help them with the growth of Enagic, which in turn helps all of us succeed, creating a win-win-win. A win for you as a distributor, a win for Enagic the company, and a win for the customer with their amazing Enagic products. Moving on to a world of polarity. I am confident we are all aware that everything about the world we live in consists of both positive and negative. Therefore, even the topic in this video may be viewed by many as being negative and quite possibly limiting. It also has a very powerful positive aspect to it, which supports us all and helps us all to achieve our own desired success. Those of us who are open-minded and solution-orientated will be able to find the positive in every negative situation or experience. Now, when I asked the head of compliance, why is, or do you feel, compliance is viewed negatively, her answer was, the word compliance is part of the problem. It is often misunderstood. Unfortunately, people think that compliance is here to make it hard for them to do the business. However, compliance is in fact, for the most part, about helping and educating our distributors to do the right thing so that they don't get themselves in trouble with industry regulators. Compliance is truly here to support our distributors and the company alike. Now, as a distributor myself, I believe it comes down to us all as distributors choosing to accept the privilege we have as being an extension of Mr. Ashira's vision and mission to make a greater impact around the world in this lifetime and quite possibly beyond. Let's now look into the importance of Enagic being a proud member of the Direct Selling Association. When I asked the head of compliance, what is the role of the DSA? Her answer was, the DSA does great work supporting the direct selling industry. When our governments are trying to pass new laws that may make it harder for the direct selling industry, the DSA are there to make sure that our industry's voice is heard. It is also there to protect direct selling companies from the regulators such as the ACCC and TGA and so on. I also asked, why is, the, why is Enagic a member of the DSA? Her answer, we are a member of the DSA because we are a direct selling company and being a member offers us and our distributors a lot of support and protection from regulators who might otherwise like to look and penalize our distributors. I then asked, why is it important we remain a member of the DSA? Her answer, it is very important to Enagic that we remain a member. If we were to lose our membership, this would open all of our distributors up to the eyes of the regulators. Also, it would have a knock-on effect in every other country where Enagic is a member of the DSA. The DSA in each respective country would start to look at Enagic and its distributors with a magnifying glass, so to speak, to find problems. So then I asked, what authority do the DSA have toward Enagic as a company? She said, the DSA, as does Enagic, have policies and guidelines that distributors need to follow. Likewise, it has guidelines that Enagic as a company need to follow. If we are not following these guidelines, the DSA can take disciplinary action against Enagic and we could lose our membership amongst other things. So then I asked, what authority do the DSA have toward the Enagic distributors? Her answer was, the DSA governs the direct selling industry. So Enagic distributors are direct sellers. Therefore, they must follow the guidelines set by the DSA. The DSA cannot take any disciplinary action against an individual distributor. They do, however, bring that distributor's actions to the company's attention and we are obliged to take action. So let's now look into the governing bodies, basically the organizations who police the industry to protect the public from misleading information. When I asked the head of compliance, what governing bodies are there around the world? Her answer was, well, in Australia, there is the TGA, which is the Therapeutic Goods Administration, along with the ACCC, which is the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. In the USA, there is the FDA, which is the Federal Drug Administration, as well as the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission. In Canada, there is Canada Health. In the UK, there is MHPRA, which is the Medical and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. In Europe, there is the EMA, which is the European Medicines Agency. In Japan, there is the, uh, the PMDA, 
which is the Pharmaceuticals and Medical Devices Agency. Now there are other organizations and agencies around the world who regulate the industry we are in and it's important that all of our distributors follow the Enagic policies and procedures as they are there to protect each distributor from breaching any of the country's laws. If a distributor breaches the Enagic policies and procedures it's likely they are breaching a country law and could face action from a governing body. So I also asked what is the role of the governing bodies and she said the role of these governing bodies for the most part is to protect the interest and safety of the consumer and supporting fair trading in markets affecting consumers and small business. So then I asked why is it important in Najik follows or abides by these governing bodies and she said these governing bodies are enforcing the law and have the power to take action against a company found to be doing the wrong thing. They similarly take action against an independent distributor if necessary because distributors are seen as business owners. Therefore, it is important for Enagic to abide by these governing bodies, follow laws, etc. to protect our company and our distributors. So I also asked, are distributors protected by Enagic from these governing bodies? And she said, Enagic distributors are protected by our policies and procedures. As long as our distributors are compliant, there is no reason for them to have any problems. However, if any of these governing bodies find a distributor to be doing something wrong that is against the Enagic policies and procedures, they will contact the distributor directly. So then I asked, can the governing, governing bodies get distributors removed from Enagic? And her answer was, a governing body cannot directly get a distributor removed. However, if a distributor is doing something so bad that a governing body decides to take action against them, Enagic will look into the matter because it is highly likely that the distributor has gone against the Enagic policies and we need to protect our company and other Enagic distributors. So I am confident that this information has given you, as it has myself, a clear understanding of the importance for the public to be protected, which also includes you in the public from being marketed to by other companies and their representatives as well as how to protect both yourself as a distributor and Enagic as a company along with all the other Enagic distributors. So let's have a quick look now over the Enagic policies and procedures that have been created to protect and support all of us who choose to be distributors. Now when I asked the head of compliance why do we have the policies and procedures she said we have the policies and procedures as a guideline they explain to distributors what they can and cannot do. Our policies and procedures are a simplified version of the laws and regulations that need to be followed. I also asked, why is it important to follow them? And she said, it is important to follow them because if a distributor doesn't, they could be breaking a law, which could get them in trouble with a governing body that has the right to take action against the distributor. Now I believe that what we have just covered around the DSA, the regulators and the policies and procedures, like myself, you'll now intellectually understand the importance of the information we are receiving. As Enagic is a global company with distributors all over the world, let's now look into the difference each of us face. When I asked the head of compliance, are there different policies and procedures around the world? She said, no, our policies and procedures are global. There may be small variations depending on local laws, however there, this is more relevant in how our policies are policed and how disciplinary action is handled. The main important clauses are the same at every branch. So I also asked, how come distributors in other countries can do things other distributors are not allowed then? Her answer was, distributors in other countries are not allowed to say or do things others are not. However, it does depend on the local branch, local laws and so on. How compliance is monitored and what actions are taken at each branch may be different. So I also asked, will Enagic look to have one policies and procedures document for all countries to abide to? Her answer was, most of our policies are already globally the same. This is because most countries have similar laws in regards to protecting the consumer. However, I would say that it is extremely unlikely that 100% of our policies will be the same globally because local laws are different in every country. So let's now cover the following areas. Discounting, selling Kangen water, marketing, health claims, income claims and online platforms. For each of the specific areas, 
I'll be showing the policy and procedure for that specific area within Australia, the USA and Europe. Now, as I am based in Australia, I'll read over the area from the policies and procedures in Australia and then show the USA and Europe versions for you to pause the video if you wish to. Please be aware that as earlier mentioned from the head of compliance, the policies and procedures are global. Therefore, what is stated for the three countries just mentioned is going to be the same for your country. If you want to learn more about the policies and procedures in your country, contact your sponsor or access your Enagic back office distributor support via www.enagic.com. First up is discounting. Now the policies and procedures for Australia say, the company offers no sales discounts or other concessions and the distributor may not offer either. Any discounts offered by distributors may be grounds for termination. You'll notice that in the USA and Europe, they are pretty much the same. So here are some examples of discounting that are non-compliant, offering cash back to a potential customer in order to get the sale. That is a no-no. Offering a discount to a potential customer in order to get the sale. That is also a no-no. Here is some advice from the head of compliance. Don't discount the Enagic products. This means do not offer a discount or to give some of your commission back. You must not offer enticement to a customer in order to get them to buy from you. Do explain that our products are high quality and worth the investment. You can offer some small token to welcome them to your team. However, this must be done after they have purchased a product and not mentioned before, as this would be enticement. Let's now look into selling Kangen water. Now the Australian policies and procedures state, distributors are strictly prohibited from making any sales in which a person receives water, bottled or otherwise from one of the company's products. No donations or other sums may be collected for the distribution of Kangen water. Charging customers due to the use of electricity, general usage of the machine or the use of any containers are also prohibited. These are considered to be business expenses and therefore should be paid by the distributor and not by the customer. Any violation of this section will constitute grounds for commission suspension and or termination of distributor status. You'll notice that the USA and Europe are pretty much the same as well. Feel free to pause the video and have a read of them if you wish to. Now here are some examples of selling bottled Kangen water which is mainly done through unit owners filling up water bottles and charging people to purchase. Once again, this is a huge no-no. I went to Google to see what I could find and this site came up offering Kangen water to people, which once again is a no-no. And more interesting about what this person is offering is 10 pH water. The Enagic ionized don't specifically produce 10 pH Kangen water. Another example is selling the bottle and filling it with Kangen water. If the intention is to sell the bottle for $10 and then give continuous free Kangen water, then that is fine. However, if you are only charging for the bottle to earn from selling the Kangen water, then this is breaching the policies and procedures. Here is some advice from the head of compliance. Don't. You must not sell Kangen water in any form for any reason. Do share Kangen water for free. Water trials are the best way to show your prospect how they will enjoy the water. Let's now look into marketing. The Australian policies and procedures state, except with the company's prior written authorization, a distributor may not sell nor promote company products on unauthorized internet sites, including, but not limited to, auction sites such as eBay, nor internet shopping sites, nor internet malls. A distributor that has obtained authorization for his or her website must obtain fresh authorization before making any material change to the website. No distributor may independently design a website that uses the names, logos, products or service descriptions of the company, nor may a distributor use blind ads on the internet making product, service or income claims which are ultimately associated with company products or the company's compensation plan. All internet websites which include the trademarks, trade names or other material that is pro property of the company must be approved by the company. Now you'll notice that in the USA and Europe they are pretty much the same again. 
Feel free once again to pause the video and read over them if you wish to. Some common sales sites around the world are Gumtree and eBay, amongst other online sales sites. Remember, marketing the products on sales sites is a breach of the policies and procedures. When we look at websites, Enagic gives us the option to purchase the EWS approved websites to support us. It's important you speak to your local compliance officer if you have your own website, as it might be requested to be taken down if it hasn't been approved by Enagic. And just as a side note, this has happened before and for the distributor creating their own website, it's a lot of time, effort and quite possibly money to create a website for it to be taken down due to breaching the policies and procedures. Now, when we look at social media, this has been a growing trend for several years now and never more than right now in this moment. All posts that may be circulating with health and income claims in particular are non-compliant. As a distributor, it's important to read the policies and procedures that you agree to and make sure that what you post is not a breach of them. Some old posts that have been circulating with non-compliant information are like these here. Do you know that one glass of Kangen water has a similar antioxidant effect of consuming one kilogram of blueberries or 100 bananas or five kilos of broccoli or 20 oranges? Oh, really? How can you prove that? If it can't be proven, then we shouldn't be saying it, which is the same for the other post shown here about the benefits of drinking Kangen water. All of these posts are non-compliant. When we look further into the social media, we know that some of the platforms give us the option to run paid advertising. Now, it's important to be aware that that's a breach of the policies and procedures to have any paid advert that represents Enagic as a company, Kangen water or the Enagic products. It's also against the policies and procedures to run paid advert that sends people to a funnel that leads them to information on Enagic, the products and the compensation plan in order to sell the products or recruit new distributors. Remember what we covered before, blind adverts. It is against the policies and procedures. So let's now dive into health claims. Now, this is a big topic and one which most distributors unintentionally are breaching through passionately sharing their experience from consuming Kang and water in particular. The Australian policies and procedures on health claims state, no therapeutic curative properties or health claims about the products may be made. In particular, the distributor must not make any claim that the company products are intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Such statements can be perceived as medical claims. Therapeutic, curative and health claims are heavily regulated. Accordingly, in addition to the general prohibition set out on this provision, distributors must not make medical, curative, treatment or health claims, whether expressed or implied, use in any of their marketing materials and promotion any descriptions that are regarded as health or medical claims stating that Kang and Water may alleviate, cure, diagnose, ease, lessen, lighten, make better, mitigate, moderate, prevent, put right, recover, reform, relieve, remedy, remit, resist, reverse, soothe, or treat any medical condition, disease, ailment, or malady. Use any disease names in any of their marketing materials or promotions, or make even relatively mundane structures or functional claims such as Kang and water carries fuel and oxygen more efficiently to the cell, detoxifies the colon, boosts immune system, etc. Any breach of these provisions will constitute grounds for discipline, commission suspension and or termination of distributor status. Now, you'll also notice that across the USA and Europe, they are pretty much the same compliance um, policies and procedures around that. Feel free to pause the video to have a look at them if you wish to. Here is some advice from the head of compliance. Don't make representations or claims that are medical, curative, treatment or health claims, whether expressed or implied. Creative, able to cure disease. That's what it means. However, do talk about our machines and explain their differences. Don't make representations or claims that stating that Kang and water can cure, prevent, lessen or have any sort of therapeutic effect on any disease, ailment or medical condition. Do talk about the different waters that the machine can produce. Don't make representations or claims stating that the water has changed your health in any way. This includes the use of testimonies and before and after pictures, either personal or third party. 
Do talk about the uses of the different waters based only on Enagic approved materials, which you can get brochures from the Enagic office. Don't make representations or claims that our machines are medical devices. And just on this one, now I spoke to the ACCC, which is the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission on the ionizers being, and be aware of my language here, medical grade water ionizers in Japan. They told me that that would be misleading the consumer, which is the public. They said it must be worded as, the Enagic products are approved as Japanese medical grade water ionizers. Now note that Japanese was first and that just saying medical grade insinuates that they are medical grade all over the world, which is incorrect. They are only approved in Japan. Now moving forward, do talk about how owning a machine can eliminate the need to purchase single use plastics, how it will work out cheaper in the long run and is better for the environment. Don't make representations or claims that 2.5 pH water can kill germs, viruses or bacteria. Do share how Kangen water is clean, hydrating and delicious. Don't make representations or claims regarding any specific health conditions, including but not limited to acid reflux, allergies, anti-aging, arthritis, autism, autoimmune disorder, back pains, cancer, constipation, diabetes, fatigue, fibromyalgia, gastresis, gout, headaches, high blood pressure, memory loss, obesity, skin conditions, weight loss, and so on. I'm just going to repeat that. Don't make representations or claims regarding any specific health conditions, including the ones that I just said, but not limited to the ones that I just said. Any specific health condition. Do, however, share the three properties of Kangen water which are antioxidant rich, alkalinity and restructured. Do talk about the high quality of our machines and that they last a long time and so on. And finally, do comply with all requirements of the Enagic policies and procedures, as well as the DSA code of practice. Let's now dive into income claims, because this is another big topic and one which many distributors once again are unintentionally breaching especially when wanting to help other people see the earning potential from in the Enagic compensation plan. The Australian policies and procedures on income claims state, no income claims, income projections, nor income representation, nor showing of commission, nor showing of commission statements or checks may be made to prospective distributors. Any false, decepting or misleading claims regarding the opportunity or products or services are prohibited. In their enthusiasm, distributors are occasionally tempted to represent hypothetical income figures based upon the inherent power of network marketing as actual income projections. This is counterproductive since new distributors may be quickly disappointed if their results are not as extensive or as rapid or as a hypothetical model would suggest. The company believes firmly that the income potential is great enough to be highly attractive in reality without resorting to artificial and unrealistic projections. Now you'll notice that in the USA and Europe they are pretty much the same again. Feel free to pause the video. Here is some advice from the head of compliance. Don't make representations or claims about specific dollar amounts of commission or bonuses earned. Do however celebrate rank achievements. Don't show proof of earnings, including screenshots of, screenshots of bank statements, actual or copies of commission, bonus or checks. Do be clear that the results vary from person to person. Don't make representations or claims regarding volume or sales made. Don't make representations or claims comparing commissions earned to pay from a previous employment. Do, however, be truthful, straightforward and don't exaggerate. Don't encourage people to imply that they could quit their job or jobs or replace full-time employment. Don't make representations or claims about earning four, five, six figures. Do talk about the Enagic compensation plan in a factual manner, such as at 1A, the commission in Australia is $365 for a direct sale of a K8. At 2A, commission in Australia is $730 for a direct sale of a K8. Don't offer or imply any guarantee of success or income, including guarantees related to following a system. 
don't make any claims regarding the amount of time required to reach certain ranks. For example, 6A, 6A2, 6A2-2 and so on. Don't use images of yachts, private planes, high-end luxury cars, homes or similar items to make or imply income claims. Don't use the following terms or terms with similar meaning in relation to the income opportunity. Passive income, residual income, reoccurring income, legacy income, replacement income, financial freedom, time freedom, unlimited income potential, opportunity for all, part-time or full-time income. Do use terms such as these or similar in a context that is not misleading and provided that in Nagic's official earnings disclosure statement is included. Flexible schedule, time flexibility, leveraged income, supplemental income, work independently. Here are some non-compliant posts. We can't state money earned and we can't also imply that somebody else can. The middle post is directed at people who sell low ticket items and that within Nagic, you can sell less and potentially earn more. This is viewed as not being compliant and more so trying to recruit distributors from other companies, which isn't ethical. The final image is advertising luxury items to entice people to join your business. As stated, it's a breach of the policies and procedures. Here are a couple of compliant posts celebrating your rank advancement and helping people know that they can learn how to start a business for themselves and you'll support them. A message from the head of compliance, do comply with all requirements of the Enagic policies and procedures, as well as the DSA code of practice. These guidelines are a summary and should be used in conjunction with Enagic's policies and procedures. And be aware of the strategies often used in the online marketing space to sell more products and earn more commissions. The trifecta and the quadzilla, these are strategies created by Enagic distributors. They are not packages offered by Enagic. Enagic only sells these products as individual products, not as packages. I dive deeper around income claims with some questions to the compliance team and here is what I received back from the head of compliance. How can we compliantly discuss the compensation plan from 1A to 6A? Her answer was, you can talk about the compensation in a simple, factual way. For example, 1A commission for a K8 in Australia is $290, or K8 commission in Australia is $290 per point. And just note that this is not including the SP of 75 Australian dollars, which would then make a direct sale 365. How can we compliantly discuss the leadership bonuses? Her answer was, it needs to be in a factual way with enough explanation so that the person you are sharing this with understands what is involved. For example, the title incentive bonus when someone is a new 6A, you need to explain that the 3000 US dollars bonus is received if in the month you are qualifying for 6A, which is 101 plus sales in your downline plus US dollars of 300,000 in sales volume, you have at least 10 group sales the month of ranking 6A. So then can we discuss the dash three, dash four, et cetera, monthly income? Her answer was, you cannot talk about the monthly income. Can we discuss the title bonuses? She said, you cannot talk about the title bonuses. Can we discuss the monthly residual income? She said, you cannot talk about residual income. How can we disclose all elements of the comp plan in an effective manner? She said, you should talk about the compensation plan as Enagic has it set out in its commission structure charts. See the official Enagic website if you want to know more. Residual income is not a term that Enagic uses and should not be used. However, to current distributors, you can talk about the bonuses in a way that explains the work that needs to be put in to get to that level. So how can we give more examples of what we can share on social media posts? She said, you cannot talk about money at all on a social media post, particularly the bonuses. So then I asked, how can we give income examples of what we can share on a webinar? Her answer was, if the webinar is to people who are not a distributor yet, then the best you can do is talk about the potential bonuses in the same manner as commission, in a factual manner using only terminology and facts you'll find on an official Enagic website. My next question, can we say it's just seven sales to earn $10,000? Her answer was, 
Enagic has come to realize our distributors have created product packages, such as the Trifecta. The Trifecta is not an Enagic product. It is a distributor created strategy of three products being sold. Therefore, a Trifecta is not a single sale. This means it's actually 21 product sales and not seven sales. Therefore, the answer is no. Also, when discussing the compensation plan, a distributor, a distributor must always start at the rank of 1A and build up from there through the compensation plan ranks. My next question, are we able to reference Enagic as a high ticket product as long as no reference to income created? Her answer was, it is a fact that our products are high ticket. As long as the post is not talking about income or alluding to income, it should be fine. However, there is another concern in regards to these types of posts. That is, if you're talking about high ticket versus low ticket, you are most likely targeting direct sellers in other companies. That is seen as stealing distributors from other companies and not ethical. While this isn't specifically against the Enagic policies, we do not recommend it. My next question, where the Enagic compensation plan is mentioned, can we give a disclaimer at the end that there are no guarantees to protect ourselves? Her answer was, Enagic policies are there to protect the distributors. Making income claims that are misleading or any claims for that matter and are against the ACL, Australian Consumer Law. If we didn't have these and let our distributors do whatever they wished, they would find themselves in trouble with regulators. As we are a member of the DSA, we are somewhat protected. However, we need to be compliant we have a strict no income claim policy. This includes a prohib prohibition on false, deceptive and misleading claims. This is to protect distributors. The ACL, which is the Australian Consumer Law, does not allow any business type to make these sorts of claims. Now, just before we go on, even though that's what came from the compliance officer, remember, and she's mentioned around Australia, remember there are laws in every country to protect the public. So this isn't just Australia related, this is a global compliance training. My next question, if a distributor has another business or other businesses, such as a coaching business, can they share about their income earned? Her answer, we do not allow a distributor to post any sort of income claim regardless of which of their businesses it is about. Unless it is crystal clear what business they are talking about, it is not in any way connected to their Enagic business and it can be substantiated. If a post is seen that is not clear, it will be considered non-compliant. Now I ne then asked, how will Enagic know if the income is from Enagic sales or a coaching business in this example? Her answer was, when Enagic and the regulators are looking at social media from a compliance point of view, we look at not just a single post. We are looking at the post in context with this person's whole social media presence in mind. Even though they may never mention Enagic or Kangen Water in their social media posts, if we follow a trail of links that lead to a funnel that leads to a training that eventually sells an Enagic product, then it's a breach of the compliance. So this means what any distributor post must comply with the Enagic policies, irrelevant of how many other businesses or how many other streams of income they may have. My next question, is there a reason why Enagic chose to have stricter policies and procedures than what the DSA have recommended to their members such as Enagic? Her answer was yes, simply to protect our distributors. As our commissions are higher than most other direct selling opportunities, it is easy for distributors to get excited and overstate things. It is also too easy to be misleading. As our commissions are higher, there is a higher chance of distributors finding themselves in the eyes of the regulators. Let's now move on to online platforms. With the rise of social media, some distributors have created their own online marketing and education platforms that feature Enagic as a high ticket sellable product and business model. It's important to know that Enagic as a company is not aligned with any online platform nor does Enagic recommend any online platform that features them as a company, their product range or their comp compensation plan, irrelevant of any online platform saying Enagic does. As I have my distributor training and live weekly support calls in an online platform, I dive deeper around the online platforms with some questions put forward to the compliance team. And here is what I received back from the head of compliance. Does Enagic as a company endorse any particular online platform that features the Enagic products as their high ticket product purchase? 
Her answer was, no, Enagic does not endorse any platform. My next question, does an online platform have to qualify to feature the Enagic products? Her answer was no. My next question, what does Enagic expect from any online platform featuring the company's products? Her answer was, we expect all distributors to be compliant regardless of what platform they may use. Therefore, we would expect that the platform is teaching compliant methods only. My next question, what would it take for Enagic to remove or decline the promotion of the Enagic product range in an online platform? Her answer was, Enagic first looks at the actions of its distributors. If we saw or see too many distributors doing the same non-compliant actions and found it to be due to the non-compliant teachings of a platform, then we would have the Enagic products removed from that platform. Enagic must protect its brand name for the good of the company, as well as for all of the distributors. We will not allow one particular group of people to damage that brand. So let's now move on to proving your claim. This is an area I actually enjoy because it helps us shift our mindset from the person selling to the potential buyer. The skeptic is always ready to pounce. They already have their guard up and if they are open-minded, they will more than likely appreciate you giving them more information. However, if they are closed-minded, they'll highly likely want to prove you are incorrect and in some cases will do anything and everything in their power to be right, according to them and their belief. When we say things like more antioxidants in a glass of kangen water than five pounds of blueberries, or kangen water hydrates you six times faster than regular water, or the ionizers are medical devices, or the ionizers will last over 20 years, or 2.5 pH water will kill all viruses. Not only are we making claims and breaching the policies and procedures, we are opening the door for the skeptic to simply say, prove it. Now, if you can't prove anything of what you have said, then you will really look like a plonker, or more to the fact, a liar, and won't build trust with the potential customer, creating more issues and potentially damaging your Enagic business. In my experience, the best thing to do is to refer to proven information, whether that be from Enagic as a company or from trusted sites that contain peer-reviewed evidence such as PubMed and Google Scholar. Now, I didn't say Google, I said Google Scholar and ensure you're researching the correct information and providing the correct information as many people don't when referring to peer-reviewed information or studies. Here are some brochures from Enagic Australia that are available to purchase from their office store. They are what I refer to as they come from Enagic themselves and this protects what I say from a company perspective. Please be aware that just because a doctor or health professional may have made videos or written books or posted on social media, it doesn't mean it's approved by Enagic to be compliant. You must protect yourself. If you post non-compliant information, it is you that will be contacted by Enagic. Remember, it said anything that you share, whether it be from you personally or from a third party. Which helps us swiftly move on to our next topic, disciplinary action. When discussing compliance and having the head of compliance kindly take time out of a day to help us all learn more to protect our businesses and Enagic, Enagic can choose to take action against any non-compliant distributor. So to help us learn more, I put forward commonly asked question, and here is what I received back from the head of compliance. What is the process within Enagic when people break the policies and procedures? Her answer was, the Enagic compliance department has a detailed process that we work through when we find the policies and procedures infraction. The, this process is confidential and we do not share that. However, the first step will be an email from the compliance department to the distributor and is noted then on file. So let's now look into distributor termination. And let's face it, none of us want to lose our Enagic business and I am sure none of us want to see anybody else lose theirs. However, if a distributor is breaching the policies and procedures, they are possibly creating awareness to industry regulators which can cause an issue for Enagic as a company and possibly for all other distributors. I put forward some questions to the compliance team and here is what I received back. Can distributors have their account terminated? Her answer, yes, there are times when a distributor can have their account terminated. My next question, what would it take from a distributor to terminate an account? Her answer, each situation is different. 
However, if a distributor is repeatedly violating our policies and procedures, or they violate the policies and procedures and refuse to stop or rectify this situation, this could be grounds for termination. Let's now talk about collaborating with Inagic, as this is what is needed for all of us to help Mr. Ashiro achieve his vision and mission, for more people around the world to experience the value of Inagic and their products, and for us to be rewarded on many levels. Once again, I put forward some questions to the compliance team, and here is what I received. What does compliance want from the distributors? Her answer, we would appreciate distributors choosing to be compliant. If in any form of doubt, don't do it. Feel free to ask if you're unsure. Watch and join any compliance training calls we have. Don't be afraid to ask. My next question, how can distributors support the compliance team? Her answer was, we do our best, although we cannot see everything. We appreciate distributors letting us know if they see something non-compliant. We believe this is helping support the compliance team as well as protecting Inagic as a company and all its distributors. If you wish to report anything to Inagic, please send screenshots and links and as much information as possible of what you have noticed. Now, for me personally, I have had many conversations with the head of compliance to see how I as a distributor and with the confidence that I have to speak up for other distributors can help us all. Now, it astounds me that there is disrespect shown toward the compliance team. These are the people who are doing their job to protect Inagic as a company and all of the distributors. Their aim is to also help people who have breached the policies and procedures, whether that be consciously or unconsciously, understand how they can become better to avoid getting into trouble with industry regulators. So being rude to a compliance officer is just not acceptable. If we as distributors are asked to make changes or to post or to not say certain things, then it's very simple. We take action and become better for the good of everyone in Eagic. We certainly don't tell the compliance team that they are wrong and living in the past. They are aware of the technology that we may use and in many cases, they themselves are working with the same technology to create a more understanding environment for us all to collaboratively work in. The focus is to empower us all through education. Now, if we are open to becoming better, then this will help us all naturally and will build a good relationship with the compliance team so that we are not just a name on the Enagic database that they look at and wonder how they will be treated if and when we have breached the policies and procedures. If we as distributors choose to ignore the communication and education from the compliance team, then we are making it harder for them to do their job and in the process causing more issues that waste their time. And we mentioned earlier around the uh, being able to contact Enagic. Well, here are some of the emails for Enagic Compliance if you have any queries about you what, what you want to post or what you may have seen posted. From the Australian compliance team, it's compliance.au at enagic-australia.com. And the compliance team for the USA is compliance at enagic.com. If you're in different country and you want to contact the compliance team in your country, please contact your nearest office. You'll be able to find them via the Enagic official website by going to www.enagic.com and then click on contact and then type in the area to locate your nearest office, which you will be able to see now on the page. So as we reflect back over the information that I have shared with you in this video, we are able to intellectually understand the importance of abiding by the policies and procedures, whilst also teaching our own team members to be compliant. When we choose to be compliant, we are supporting Enagic as a whole, the company and other distributors. Together we are more powerful and can make a larger impact across the world. So based on the information that I've shared with you, I believe it's important to choose your action. Are you going to be a non-compliant distributor, putting your business at risk as well as the other distributors' businesses and Enagic at risk? Or are you going to be compliant in order to protect what you have and are working toward creating as well as protecting other distributors' businesses and Enagic? It's time to make a conscious choice. Choosing to come from a place of respect for each other and leading with integrity will ensure you are rewarded tenfold for your conscious efforts. For further training and support, please visit www.enagictraining.com and ensure you share this video with your team members so they too build a compliant business that rewards them in this lifetime and quite possibly generations to come. 
Feel free to comment below the value you received and if you've got any questions, and I look forward to helping you move forward building a compliant business. Thank you for your time and bye for now. Enjoying my YouTube channel? Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell to receive further value.